Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today is 150k thoughts on the Giant Trance E. I know you riders out there cannot wait for the glossy review, which will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. So I thought I would go out POV style with the new Insta360 ONE RS. This is a 4K action camera that's 320 euros. Is this the GoPro killer? Maybe it is, I'm gonna do a full review soon. And I'm super excited to announce Quadlock has come on as a major sponsor in 2022. Quadlock is an Aussie company making awesome smartphone covers and cradles for your bike, for your car, for your boat, for your golf buggy, for pretty much everything. I'm super excited to be working with them. And also riders, we can't forget Schwabi making the best mountain bike tires in the business, and you know it. And also, Insta360 and Quadlock, there's a link in the show notes where you can get the best deals. Quadlock's offering 10% off to Sands Bikes riders, absolute legends. So today's gonna be POV style with Herman. The weather looks okay at the moment, but the last 14 days, we have had torrential rain in Spain. So at the moment, we're right at the bottom in the car park. We're gonna go up to 1,800 meters. So let's see what the terrain's like up there and find out what I think of the giant trance. Let's go. First downhill out on the trance, get it done. Conditions are far from perfect. And how have I been enjoying my 150 or 200 Ks on the trance? Well, the first couple of rides, I didn't get on that well with it, if I'm 100% honest. I was trying to ride it like an enduro bike. And look, you don't want to do that. It's a trail bike. And once I started telling myself it was a trail bike, I fell in love with this little rocket ship with the automatic suspension and that trail geometry, 140, 150 suspension. Whoa, you definitely have to pick your lines better. Yeah, at my local trail center, it's an absolute rocket ship. And I have to say, it's probably my favorite bike to ride at the moment for that type of riding. This is super muddy out here. And these are proper big trails in the Sierra. But it's been such a long week, two weeks with rain. I don't know how people in England do it with bad weather. And I bet all the riders from England are gonna say, it's not even muddy, Sam. Well, this is pretty muddy for Spain. All right, dropping back into number two. And, all right, how does it ride? Okay, how does it enduro downhill? Okay, you cannot be super reckless. You've got to pick your lines, but it does it fine. Clearly, you're going to be happier on a super enduro or enduro bike, but it can do it. Trail riding, it's the boss. So much fun with the automatic suspension. Super responsive, little dart. Uh, climbing. Far out, man. This is the best climber in its class. I haven't tried everything, obviously, but this is a weapon for climbing. And jumping with the 140 at the back, 150 at the front, and a long chain stay, kind of reminds me a little bit like a BMX. This thing can launch. Yeah, you want to get it right, because you don't have like a lot at the back to support you when you land but definitely you can jump pretty well. Suspension wise, as I said, the Maestro suspension is good. Takes a while to tune it because you've got less of it and you've got to get it right, but definitely feels really good. I like the Maestro suspension. Look at that, look at that. Ah, that's more enduro than trail and it's fine. Definitely, you definitely have to pick that line. And let's, how does the bike actually feel when you jump on it? Well, it's got like pretty long, the sizing. So we're talking four, eight, six, I think, the reach. And we've got a 50 mil stem and we've got flat kind of almost cross country bars. And you definitely have more, I'm not gonna say a cross country feeling bike, but you definitely sit over the front more and lower. It took me a while to get used to. I mean, if it was me, I would probably put a 40 or even a 30 on the front and rise the bars. But saying that, now I've got used to it. For the trail stuff of riding, you can really get in an aggressive position. 
you know, I'm starting to change a little bit how I, I used to do loads of upgrades, but now just riding the bikes and seeing, you know, really, if it's necessary to change all this stuff, ooh, it's getting pretty nasty here, going off to the bushes, and now we're going up a pretty steep climb, and I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to talk about the motor. So the Giant Trance is running the sync drive motor, which is based on a Yamaha PWX3, which what makes it different to Yamaha PWX3 is the software. So Giant uses his own sync drive software, and it has an app, you can connect to the app, you can sync it with Strava, do all that stuff. You can record your rides. It's really good, the app. You can, you can change the settings of the power output of the five assistant modes. And it also has an automatic mode, which I'm using right now. I think the automatic mode works really well. Sometimes you get a little bit of like a, you know, a bit of more of a power increase very rapidly. But you know, overall it works very well. And more importantly, how does the motor feel? Well, I think it's a, a great feeling motor. It's definitely got a natural pedal stroke. And one of the main things for me is it doesn't have a clunk. You know, like the Bosch and the EPA have that clunk. So this thing doesn't have a clunk, which I absolutely love. And it's really quiet under load. But in between all the assistant modes, it doesn't really change that much noise. I would put it in the same category as an EP8 and maybe the bros is still winning for quietness and top end power if you haven't seen my epic hill climb test with the Bosch the bros the Shimano and the sync drive got to check it out because the giant actually won like I was really surprised check the video definitely definitely was surprised I do put it down to the trail geometry and the automatic suspension but I think honestly if you're looking to keep up with your mates with a Bosch or a Bros, you're definitely gonna do it with the sync drive. And then straight after the hill climb test, we did an epic range test, where I put all four motors, put them in the top power, the most assistance you can get, and I rode up and down my local downhill. Definitely worth checking out that test if you haven't seen it. But in conclusion, the Giant, the smallest battery on test, got 1,250 meters of vertical climbing, and I was super impressed with that. So definitely if you're looking at doing some epic days backcountry rides, grab yourself the 250 watt range extender. It takes you up to 875. I reckon you're gonna get probably around 2000 meters of vertical climbing. But remember, that is an absolute, that's an extreme range test. If you go on eco or trail, you're clearly gonna get more range. So do I think the 625 battery is enough? because the aluminium trance comes with a 750, I'm pretty sure. Uh, for me, it's enough. If you're going riding with your mates with the Levo with the 700 or with the new 750, you're definitely gonna have to battery manage. Uh, and I normally do that at the start of the ride. Just ask them to slow down a little bit, battery manage, and you'll be fine. If you're not that fit, maybe go for the 750. I also want to say that the sync drive motor is an absolute standout at low cadence. And why is low cadence important when you're climbing technical stuff? Because you can sit back and almost track stand. I mean, that's pretty techy there. You can sit back, almost track stand and hold your balance and it will just tractor you up. It's definitely, I think, on par with the bros. The bros got great low end torque as well. So yeah, that's definitely a massive plus. Come on, showing me a shortcut. Not so sure about the shortcut, it's a river, mate. And what about ergonomics and the overall build of the bike? So the one I'm riding is the top specs. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, it's wild today. So overall build is eight and a half grand. Look, I think it's pretty bang and value for what you're getting. So I love the uh, remote and the display, super minimalistic. 
definitely getting up there with Specialized, Minimalistic, and way better than Bosch. Uh, and uh, what about the build? Okay, we've got XT brakes, XT running gear, carbon wheels. Yeah, not a massive fan of the tires that came on it. Uh, seat post, seat post. This bike's got such a low standover, which is amazing. But then the seat post doesn't go deep enough. I'd love to see a bit deeper, like a 170 or something in the back there. And obviously you've got the live valve, which I didn't think I'd be a fan of, but I am a massive fan of it. And how good is it? You don't have to charge any batteries. It's all fully wired in. I mean, I know it might look a little bit ugly, the cockpit with all the cables, but I'll take that any day of the week. Fox 36s, I'd like to see, you know, a grip to not a fit for dampener in the 36s, but you know, it's not bad. Uh, once I found the, comp the tiny compression knob from live valve, which I didn't know was there, and I was riding it for the first week fully closed. Oh. And I hope the Insta camera is doing this justice, riders. And how is the footage from the Insta, the new camera? And the new iPhone mount from Quadlock, new sponsor at Sands Bikes. More about that next week. So what could we get equivalent if we're going online? So let's go Canyon, Canyon Spectral. You know, it's a trail bike, similar-ish specs. The top spec there with carbon everything is seven and a half. Uh, and then let's have a look at something more like the Commensal, the uh, trail bike from Commensal. I think that's like eight and a half, but you don't have any local support. So yeah, I would say value for money. This thing is epic. And who's it for and who's it not for? It's definitely more of a trail bike. So if you're looking to point it down in Duro trails or take it to a bike park, I would say it's not your bike. But if you want to do epic days out in the saddle, ride Enduro trails, but know that it's a trail bike, slow it down a little bit, Pick those lines better. This bike really is rewarding. Like, I didn't think there was much point having a trail bike these days, but this is a little bit reminiscent of my, my Banshee Phantom, which I absolutely love, Short Travel 29er. This thing on the right trails is an absolute weapon. And now I've been waiting for this part of the trail to talk about, are you a tramp or a rain rider? because they are hugely different bikes. And on this trail, definitely gonna be happier on the rain. But, this bike you can dissect the trails. And on the right trails, it's a lot of fun. But, oh, if you wanna ride stuff like this, I would say you're probably going better off going to the Big Brother. And I've never seen it so wet in the theater ever. And now we come down to the last part of the downhill and it's time for a beer. Well earned, wettest ride I've had for a very long time. And there you go riders. I hope you enjoyed that 150, 200K thoughts of the trance. I will be dropping my long-term glossy review probably in about a month, but I thought I'd just get this out. And you know it, if you have any questions, tip me up, happy to help. And if you have not subscribed to Sense Bikes, please do so. Share with like-minded people. It really does help out with those algorithms. And you know it. Stay safe out there. And I'm going to see you next week. Yeah.